Is it true that you, had, in one sitting, drank 117 beers? Yes. One night. If the bars of Los Angeles could talk, they'd reveal the secrets of old Hollywood's legendary hard drinkers, where every cocktail had a story and every sip a scandal. Join us as we count down the 25 worst alcoholics in Hollywood history. Let's dig in. Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? Number 25, Andre the Giant. Celebrated as the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant was a towering French wrestler known for his imposing stature, standing nearly 7.5 feet tall and weighing around 500 pounds. However, it was his legendary drinking that earned him a place on this list. Andre's drinking was nothing short of astonishing. He was said to consume around 7,000 calories of alcohol a day. During one six-hour drinking session, he managed to down 119 standard bottles of beer before collapsing in a hotel corridor. His drinking companions simply covered him with a tarpaulin. One notorious incident took place in Kansas City, where a bar owner allowed Andre to stay as long as he kept drinking. Andre stayed until 5 in the morning, having consumed about 40 vodka and tonics. As one of the highest paid wrestlers of his time, a significant portion of Andre's income was spent on beer and hard liquor. After a month of filming The Princess Bride, his bar tab was over $40,000. Number 24, Judy Garland. Celebrated as one of the finest actresses of her time and best known for her iconic role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland led a tumultuous life marked by battles with drug addiction that ultimately led to her untimely death at the age of 47. Garland's upbringing was far from easy. Her parents had a troubled relationship, with her father providing more emotional support than her mother. Tragically, her father died unexpectedly of meningitis in 1935, further straining Garland's relationship with her mother. Reports suggest that Garland's mother began giving her pills when she was only 10 years old. By her late teens, she had become addicted to the pills. Despite signing a contract with MGM to further her career, the lack of support at home led Garland down the path of drug addiction. During the filming of The Wizard of Oz at the age of 17, she resorted to taking various diet, energy, and sleeping pills to control her weight and cope with her demanding schedule. As her career flourished, so did her addiction. Garland's drug addiction and unstable upbringing took a heavy toll on her. She was married five times. Her fifth husband, Mickey Deans, discovered her lifeless body when he found her bathroom door locked and no answer. Garland's struggles with drug addiction were well documented, and her death, ruled an accidental overdose of barbiturates, marked a tragic end to a remarkable career and life. Number 23, William Claude Fields, Known for his wit and humor, the iconic comedian had a legendary reputation for his love of alcohol. His humorous quips about drinking have become legendary, such as his famous line, I never drink water, I'm afraid it's becoming a habit. Fields was a man of strict discipline when it came to his drinking habits. He humorously remarked, I have never taken a drink in my sleep and I drink nothing stronger than gin before breakfast. Born over a bar during Prohibition, he stockpiled thousands of bottles of whiskey and gin in his attic. Even after Prohibition ended, Fields kept a substantial supply of emergency alcohol at home, telling Harpo Marx, You can never be sure Prohibition won't come back, my boy. A classic story about W.C. Fields and his drinking habits concerns his time on the set. He was known to carry a flask of gin martinis, which he humorously referred to as his lemonade, or, in some versions of the story, his pineapple juice. On one occasion, a prankster switched the contents of his flask with real lemonade, prompting Fields to exclaim angrily, Who put lemonade in my lemonade? Number 22. Oliver Reed. He was a prominent English actor in the late 1960s and early 1970s, famous for his roles in films such as The Trap, Oliver, and The Three Musketeers. Off-screen, Reed was notorious for his excessive drinking and unruly behavior. He once boasted that he did not live in the world of sobriety, and his actions were a testament to that statement. Reed's drinking escapades included consuming up to 20 pints of lager with a chaser of gin or creme de menthe in a single sitting. On one occasion, he drank 126 pints of beer in 24 hours. His drunken antics ranged from pretending to play rugby with a baby at a christening to exposing himself in public. 
Reed's career was marked by scandalous stories of his drunken behavior. Tragically, Reed suffered a heart attack and died in 1999 during the filming of Gladiator, leaving behind a legacy of both remarkable acting and legendary drinking. Number 21, Richard Harris. Another member of the group of drunken actors that included Peter O'Toole, Richard Burton, and Oliver Reed, Harris was known for his excessive drinking. Born in Ireland, Harris's relationship with alcohol began at an early age, marked by reckless incidents such as crashing his father's van after a few pints in the pub as a teenager. Harris found success as an actor both on the London stage and in Hollywood, which allowed him to indulge his appetite for alcohol. His drinking habits included consuming up to two and a half bottles of vodka a day. He was a regular at London's Drunk Tank and was known to order six double vodkas as his usual. Harris's erratic behavior, which included swings from manic joy to black rage, affected his personal and professional life. Despite his remarkable talent and career, Harris's life was marred by his battle with alcohol. He died in 2002, leaving behind a legacy of extraordinary performances and notorious drinking. Number 20, Frank Sinatra. The legendary singer and actor had a well-known fondness for alcohol, especially Jack Daniel's whiskey. He was rumored to drink an entire bottle of Jack Daniels every day. Sinatra's signature drink consisted of four ice cubes, two fingers of Jack Daniels, and a splash of water. While he was a charismatic and talented entertainer, his drinking habits occasionally led to confrontations with journalists and fellow actors. Sinatra's behavior could turn mean when he was drunk, and he had a reputation for picking fights in these situations, particularly when consuming gin. Sinatra was a part of the American Olympic drinking team, a group of his friends and fellow celebrities known for their love of alcohol. He passed away in 1998 at the age of 82 and was even buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels in his casket, a testament to his lifelong affection for the drink. Number 19, Richard Burton. Celebrated for his illustrious acting career and turbulent relationship with Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton struggled with alcoholism throughout his life. His struggle began early. He reportedly began drinking at the age of 12 and continued until his death. At the height of his alcoholism in the 1970s, Burton consumed an astonishing two to three bottles of vodka a day. Despite his remarkable talent and reputation as an actor, his excessive drinking often affected his work. His portrayal of a hard-drinking college professor in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf earned him an Oscar nomination, but his alcoholism continued to affect his health. While filming The Klansman in 1974, Burton struggled with balance issues, underlining the toll his addiction had taken. It wasn't until later in life, in the midst of a difficult divorce from Elizabeth Taylor, that Burton sought treatment for his alcoholism. Sadly, despite his efforts, he died in 1984 at the age of 58, suffering from cirrhosis of the liver and kidney disease. His life and career remain a testament to both his talent and the destructive power of addiction. Number 18, Elizabeth Taylor. Famous for her beauty and acting talent, she had a long battle with alcoholism and addiction to painkillers. Her openness about these struggles helped to destigmatize addiction. In 1983, Taylor made headlines when she became the first celebrity to enter the Betty Ford Center, founded by former First Lady Betty Ford, who had also battled addiction. Taylor's decision to seek treatment had a profound impact, inspiring many to confront their own addictions. Her journey to recovery allowed her to focus her energy on raising awareness of AIDS, making a significant contribution to the cause. Number 17, Ethel Barrymore. A respected member of the famous Barrymore family, she faced her own battle with alcoholism at an early age. Despite her extraordinary talent on stage and screen, she turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism for her personal struggles. Like her brother John Barrymore, Ethel's drinking became addictive, threatening both her career and her well-being. In her 30s, however, she managed to break free from the grip of alcohol and became a teetotaler, recognizing the destructive impact it had on her family. Ethel Barrymore's illustrious career spanned six decades and her ability to overcome her drinking problem was a major triumph in her life, reflecting her resilience and determination. Number 16, 
Orson Welles, the famous filmmaker and actor, had a well-documented history of alcoholism. His fondness for the Negroni, a gin and scotch cocktail, was well known. Wells's relationship with alcohol stemmed from a troubled family background, particularly his father's battle with alcoholism, which led to their estrangement. While working in Rome, Wells's advocacy of the Negroni helped popularize the cocktail in the United States. However, his excessive drinking contributed to significant weight gain, peaking at nearly 400 pounds. Wells's drinking also affected his behavior on film sets, where he often indulged between takes, affecting his performance and professional relationships. Number 15. Anne-Margaret Known as one of Hollywood's original sexy kittens, Anne-Margaret faced significant challenges in her life, including battles with alcoholism. Despite her vivacious on-screen persona, her private life was characterized by a penchant for partying and excitement. Her well-publicized affair with Elvis Presley during the filming of Viva Las Vegas contributed to her descent into full-blown alcoholism. Initially, her drinking served as a coping mechanism for her anxiety, particularly over the nude scenes in the film RPM. By 1971, her drinking had escalated to the point where it was blurring her perception of reality and fantasy. In 1980, Anne Margaret successfully overcame her addiction and later candidly shared her journey to recovery in her autobiography. Her story is a testament to the resilience and challenges faced by even the most glamorous figures in Hollywood. Number 14, Montgomery Clift. A gifted and methodical actor, Montgomery Clift struggled with alcoholism throughout his life. As a closeted gay man at a time of severe stigma, Clift turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism. His struggles with depression and feelings of isolation exacerbated his addiction. Clift's alcoholism tragically culminated in a devastating car accident that severely disfigured his once handsome face. Despite this setback, he continued to work in the industry, although his reliability on set was often compromised by his addiction. During the filming of The Misfits, his drinking led to erratic behavior that affected co-star Marilyn Monroe, who was facing personal challenges of her own. His addiction ultimately contributed to his untimely death at the age of 45, as he suffered from heart problems exacerbated by years of substance abuse. Montgomery Clift's life and career are a poignant reminder of the toll that addiction can take on even the most talented individuals in Hollywood. Number 13, Robert Mitchum. The legendary actor had an infamous incident that highlighted his battle with alcoholism. During the filming of His Kind of Woman, he instigated a drunken brawl with stuntmen, turning a staged fight scene into a real-life brawl. Known for his dark and brooding personality, Mitchum often left a mess in the wake of his drunken episodes. He gained notoriety for his off-screen antics and was even arrested in a police sting operation targeting Hollywood stars known for excessive partying. Mitchum's heavy drinking habits were well documented, with stories of him consuming excessive amounts of alcohol from dawn to dusk, leading to incidents of hotel room destruction and erratic behavior. His defiance of authority further complicated his problems with alcohol and led to several brushes with the law. Robert Mitchum's struggles with alcoholism and his turbulent off-screen behavior underscore the challenges faced by even the most talented and celebrated figures in Hollywood. Number 12. Sterling Hayden Known for his colorful life as an actor and sailor, Hayden remains a fascinating figure. Despite his ambivalence about his acting career and his regret at having worked with the House Un-American Activities Committee in the 1950s, Hayden found solace and pride in his adventures at sea. However, his life was also marked by severe alcoholism which he struggled to overcome. While filming a documentary, Hayden would engage in long, rambling conversations with the filmmakers while consuming copious amounts of wine and hashish. His relentless drinking often led to meandering and incoherent dialogue, with discussions extending far beyond their natural conclusions. Despite this, the filmmakers chose not to interrupt or shout, cut. Hayden rarely talked about his Hollywood experiences, but was candid about his struggles with alcohol. He expressed remorse and confusion about his drinking, questioning why he indulged when he did not necessarily feel unhappy. The filmmakers observed his erratic and inebriated behavior with an almost nonchalant acceptance, capturing a poignant portrait of Hayden's complex relationship with alcohol. 
Number 11, Broderick Crawford. Famous for his role as Chief Matthews in the television series Highway Patrol, he fought a relentless battle with alcoholism throughout his career. The demanding schedule of a weekly television series only exacerbated his drinking problem. His excessive drinking led to several arrests and DUIs, earning him the nickname Old 502 for his habit of driving under the influence. To manage his alcoholism on set, Officer Frank Runyon, a technical advisor for the California Highway Patrol, CHP, was tasked with keeping Crawford sober. The production company even had to shoot some scenes on private roads so that Crawford could drive legally. But Crawford's battle with alcoholism strained relationships both within the show and with the CHP, highlighting the destructive impact of his addiction on his professional and personal life. Number 10, Mary Astor. An acclaimed American actress known for her roles in films such as The Maltese Falcon and The Great Lie, she had a turbulent personal life marked by scandalous divorces and custody battles. Her battle with alcoholism spanned two decades, beginning in the 1930s. She openly admitted that she turned to alcohol to cope with the stress, loneliness, and insecurity she faced. The turning point in Astor's struggle came in 1949, when she attempted to end her life and suffered a nervous breakdown that led her to seek treatment at a sanatorium for alcoholics. There she found solace in AA and rediscovered her faith in God, which she credited with aiding her recovery. Despite her struggles with alcoholism, Astor continued to appear in films and television shows into the 1960s. Later in life, she ventured into writing and authored several books. She died in 1987 at the age of 81, leaving behind a legacy of resilience and talent in the entertainment industry. Number 9. Albert Finney Celebrated for his roles in films such as Tom Jones and Murder on the Orient Express, the distinguished English actor enjoyed a remarkable career despite struggling with heavy drinking for many years. He openly admitted to consuming three or four pints of alcohol at lunchtime and later reflected that while it was enjoyable at the time, he wondered how he managed it all. In 1984, Finney faced a defining moment when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer. The diagnosis was a wake-up call that led him to quit drinking. His decision to embrace sobriety not only contributed to his recovery from the disease, but also allowed him to continue acting until 2012, leaving a lasting legacy in the world of cinema. Albert Finney passed away in 2019 at the age of 82, remembered for his talent on screen and his courage in overcoming personal challenges, including his battle with alcoholism. Number 8. Leonard Nimoy Best known for his iconic portrayal of Mr. Spock in Star Trek, Nimoy struggled with alcoholism during the filming of the beloved series. Nimoy openly discussed how he initially turned to alcohol as a means of coping with the intense demands and pressures of the Star Trek set. His co-star William Shatner observed that Nimoy used alcohol to numb the disappointments that often accompany fame and success. What began as an occasional drink soon escalated due to Nimoy's addictive personality. It wasn't until after the end of Star Trek that Nimoy sought help for his alcoholism through rehabilitation. Although he successfully overcame this battle, Nimoy's life was tragically cut short by another bout of smoking, which ultimately led to his death at the age of 83. Leonard Nimoy's legacy extends beyond his iconic role as Mr. Spock to include his candid discussions of addiction and his journey to recovery, which continue to resonate with fans and admirers worldwide. Number 7. Lee Marvin He was indeed a complex and unique individual, celebrated not only for his acting talent, but also for his unconventional lifestyle. Despite coming from a lineage of historical significance, Marvin's life was profoundly shaped by traumatic wartime experiences that left lasting scars on his psyche. He turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism to deal with his inner demons. As Marvin's health deteriorated, exacerbated by breathing difficulties and steroid treatments, his battle with alcoholism continued. His tragic end came in 1987, when he suffered a fatal heart attack at the age of 63. Throughout his life, Marvin struggles with alcohol recurring nightmares from his wartime experiences and a tendency to get into fights were haunting aspects that underscored his complex personality and tumultuous journey. Lee Marvin's legacy endures through his unforgettable screen performances, 
and serves as a poignant reminder of the profound impact that personal trauma and addiction can have on even the most talented and resilient individuals. Number six, Bella Lugosi. In the later years of his life, horror icon Bella Lugosi struggled with severe morphine addiction and alcoholism. These problems became painfully apparent during a film shoot with director Ed Wood. Lugosi's addiction became apparent when Wood, who had been sent to deliver Lugosi's favorite scotch, found the actor hiding behind a curtain. Lugosi emerged in tears, brandishing a gun and, in a moment of desperation, threatening to take Wood with him. Understanding the seriousness of Lugosi's situation, Wood managed to calm him down by offering his favorite drink, Boilermakers, which eventually helped Lugosi drink himself to sleep. This poignant incident reflects the depth of Lugosi's personal struggles and the profound effect addiction had on his life in his later years. Number five, Bernard Lee. He had a remarkable acting career that spanned over 50 years, amassing numerous film and television credits. However, personal tragedies, including the tragic death of his wife in a house fire and a brutal mugging, affected him deeply and led to bouts of depression and alcohol abuse. Lee's addiction became so severe that during breaks in the filming of the Edgar Wallace television series, measures had to be taken to confine him to his dressing room to prevent him from drinking. Despite these efforts, Lee found ways to continue drinking, underlining the extent of his addiction and its grip on his life. Fellow actor Richard Burton once admitted that Lee could outdrink even him, highlighting the severity of Lee's battle with alcoholism. These behind-the-scenes challenges contrast with Lee's professional success on screen, painting a poignant picture of the complexities and personal struggles actors face behind their public personas. Number four, Bud Abbott. His partnership with Lou Costello faced considerable challenges, exacerbated by Abbott's battle with alcoholism. His struggles with heavy drinking stemmed from his efforts to cope with epilepsy, a condition he dealt with throughout his life. This addiction created tensions within their partnership, especially given Costello's concerns about his wife's own alcohol-related problems. Despite Abbott's personal demons, his early career included work at the Casino Theater in Brooklyn, a stepping stone that eventually led him to organizing and managing touring burlesque shows. This trajectory demonstrates how Abbott navigated and thrived in the entertainment industry while dealing with profound personal challenges. His journey underscores the resilience and determination often required to pursue a career in entertainment, even in the midst of significant personal struggles. Number three, Fatty Arbuckle. Indeed, he had a tumultuous childhood, marked by an absent father who physically abused him. These early experiences affected Arbuckle deeply, contributing to his shyness and leading him to turn to alcohol as a coping mechanism. Arbuckle's challenges extended beyond his personal struggles. He became embroiled in scandal when he was accused of sexual assault and manslaughter in the 1920s, events that tarnished his career and led to bouts of alcoholism and depression. Despite these setbacks, Arbuckle remained determined to make a comeback, demonstrating resilience in the face of adversity. His efforts to return to the entertainment industry illustrate the complexities of redemption and the enduring spirit of individuals who strive to overcome their past mistakes and hardships. Arbuckle's story is a reminder of the human capacity for resilience and the challenges many face in overcoming personal and professional crises. Number two, Desi Arnaz. Celebrated for his iconic role on I Love Lucy, Desi Arnaz struggled with alcoholism throughout his life. While he maintained sobriety on set, alcohol played a significant role in his personal life leading to disturbing incidents. His alcoholism became a growing concern for his then-wife, Lucille Ball, and ultimately contributed to their divorce. Arnaz refused to address his drinking until a pivotal moment after the death of his second wife, Edie. It was his son, Desi Arnaz Jr., who finally convinced him to confront his addiction and seek help by attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. This marked a crucial turning point in Arnaz's battle with alcoholism and highlighted the transformative power of family support and personal determination. Desi Arnaz's journey underscores the challenges many face in overcoming addiction, even in the midst of professional success and public acclaim. 
His story also reflects the importance of seeking support and treatment in confronting personal demons, ultimately paving the way for healing and recovery. Number one, Audie Murphy. Born into poverty in Texas in 1924, his life began with great hardship. His father's battle with alcoholism left the family in constant instability, often forcing young Audie and his siblings to work grueling hours in the cotton fields from an early age. These early experiences of hardship and deprivation shaped Murphy's character and resilience. Despite his difficult upbringing, Audie Murphy's life took a dramatic turn when he became a war hero during World War II, earning him fame and accolades. However, the trauma of war, particularly post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, haunted him deeply. His struggles with PTSD manifested in a volatile personality and led him down a path of addiction to drugs, alcohol, and gambling. Murphy's post-war years were marked by tumultuous battles with his inner demons, exacerbated by the scars of his traumatic past and the pressures of fame. His story is a poignant reminder of the lasting effects of early adversity and the challenges many veterans face in adjusting to life after combat. Despite his struggles, Audie Murphy's legacy as a decorated war hero and his advocacy for veterans' issues continue to inspire generations. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through Hollywood's history of alcoholism. Stay tuned for more shocking stories in the next episode, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.